we'll be back. Hi kids, back again. Uh, showing you how to make uh, double helix electrodes on the cheap. Anyway, what we've got here are just plain plastic zip strips. You'll see that they're of varying lengths. They all started off at the same length, but I clipped off the ends in a graduated way to uh, tell which was which. Uh, what I'm going to do with these is uh, thread these stainless steel ties through slits that I created in each of them. Let's see if you can see that. I took a sharpened screwdriver bit and some pine wood and press those slits. The stainless steel ties are exactly five millimeters wide. The graduations on a zip strip are exactly one millimeter. So it's pretty much five millimeters with a two millimeter skip. You'll see in some places I messed up a little bit and kind of pushed that. That one's kind of close. But um, I'm just going to be threading these. Probably a better way to do these would be to uh, have some sort of press with a rail so you could line them up so they would be equidistant and you just have to worry about making your notch spaces. Hi kids. Uh, shameless free software advertising. Uh, this is uh, the stainless steel ties. And I've shown you the uh, nylon ties, and now I'm going to show you how you construct your on the cheap double helix. Now, I've noticed that the oxygen side of these do rust, so don't expect perfect stuff from Harbor Freight. I mean, you're talking about Chinese manufacturer. But anyway, up here I have my six ties of varying lengths. The reason that I come to length is because each one got its five millimeter hole punched. Uh, another two millimeters ahead of the one before, so that's why I have to have them in kind of an order. I'm going to start off with the longest. What you're going to want to do is take two strips force the first one through. While you're doing this, it's a good idea to figure out which way your coil is going to go. It's going to go uh, this way or this way. You have to make that choice pretty much right now. And uh, these aglets on the end, make sure that they're aligned. It makes them a lot easier to deal with. Also makes them really close. So that's why you usually want your slits cut just tight enough for these to slip through and nothing more. You can see the downside of Having them tight is sometimes you have to repunch them. I'll take my sharpened screwdriver bit. Let's see if I have any better luck this time. Alright, finally got that one through and put it in backwards. So. Uniformity is going to help you out trying to make sure that these don't touch. That's kind of a big deal if you're going to be using them for generation. But anyway, you've got your two in. Your longest, take your second longest, and do the same thing. First in the first slot, second in the second slot, but this one goes two more millimeters down this way before the slots start. So start one at the top. Go down two notches and start your next one on your next tie strip, and so on and so on. As you get your strips going. Now, when you get one started, you don't want to go down too far because that means that you usually have to bend this one, your next one, to get it set. So you want to try to keep them, or at least the nylon strip. You want to try to keep the stainless going through it at a fairly equal depth, so when you finally have them 
to the point where they're pretty close. You're not working against them when you're trying to force the strips down. Now, on my first one that was in the ch generation chamber that you've seen, there are only four of these tie straps. This one, I decided to take the extra time and make six. Because I think it'll just hold structure better. The other one has loops overlapping and things, and it was my first one, and I really didn't care if the slats were out of a 90 degree angle that much or not. I was able to mostly get it together with rubber bands. But uh, this is the way that you make a double helix on the cheap. I'll be back with you when I've got uh, the first or all of the tie straps put on. Alright, you got the basic idea. It's gradually going up the, uh, the scale of tie strips here. I just think I have that one angled weird. But this is the point where you need to make your decision which way you're going to make your coil. Uh, last time I made my coil going this way, so this time I'm going to do the exact opposite just because it gives me a chance to see what the exact opposite will do. So, when you get to this point, choose one of your strips. <laughs> Try to choose one of your strips. Go into your slot again. At this point, you want to make sure that everything is very, very even, or else you're going to get some coils that stick out farther than the other ones, and that's going to be different, and I don't think you're going to like the effect. So, as you can see, I can get one tie strap pretty much around that. I'm going to leave this part out so I can attach one of these to that and start my next go-around. But you kind of get the idea. Uh, you might want to keep resizing this a little bit, at least until you can look at it this way. Got to tighten it up. If I do that, once I get circular, it looks like I'll have to just Go up another, another notch. But um, at this point, if you can make these points come just exactly to to one, then you can start your next line with angles like that, and then just slip these into it. Uh, that's that's about it. That's how to make a tubular on the cheap. I'll I'll get back with you when I have this one finished. Two levels. Be careful when you're doing uh, the ones that are really close to the end because you can bend the, the end of your tie strap which makes it tough to start the next one. Huh? This is level uh, three. Be back after a fourth one, but try to keep them symmetrical and I'll show you what I mean. We got layer four. Still trying to keep it together. Back in a few. Here we are, level five and climbing. I think six, seven, maybe eight. Maybe I can squeeze an eighth in there. I'm not sure. Be right back. All right, here we are at level seven. You can see everything's pretty symmetrical. Be back with you for eight. Okay. Here we are, 7th level, or 6th, or 8th maybe, not sure anymore. It's kind of monotonous and brain draining to wind these through through the slots. They're not that easy to get through because the slots are pretty tight, but the good news about that is it can take some work. I mean, this is not going to fail any time. Oops. <laughs> but... Looks like it'll work. The only place where I have to worry about touching really is right here at these junction spots. And here at the end. We'll keep going, see how it goes. Finally, 
the last layer is done, or at least I've run out of holes. So, no more feeling like a uh, South American basket weaver. Uh, we're going to put this in and see if we can hook it up in conjunction with the other one that we have downstairs and see what kind of output we can get out of that. Uh, I'm really curious, and I just figured out I can switch loads between containers and save myself a lot of machining. Be right back with you.